The room behind Obi-Wan buzzed with whispered conversations. Master Balaba stepped into the computer room, apparently wanting to put an end to an awkward moment. I think that's enough, Caleb. Excuse us, Master Kenobi. We value your time. Obi-Wan wasn't looking at her. He was staring back at the beacon, too, now contemplating. No, no, he finally said, gesturing to the crowd without turning. Please, wait. He scratched the back of his head and turned back to the gathering. Yes, he said quietly. I suppose it could be used to warn Jedi away. The students fairly rumbled with discussions and reaction. Warn Jedi away? Jedi didn't run. Jedi rushed toward danger. Jedi stood. Jedi fought. The other masters stepped in, beckoning to Obi-Wan. Students, said one elder, there's no reason to... No expected reason, Obi-Wan said, pointing his index finger to the air. He sought Caleb's gaze. Only what our young friend said. Unexpected reasons. A hush fell over the group. Caleb, reluctant to say anything else, let another student ask what he was thinking. What then? If you send us all away, what then? Obi-Wan thought for a moment, before turning toward the students and giving a warm and reassuring smile. The same as any other time. You will obey the directive and await the next one. Raising his arms, he dismissed the assembly. Thank you for your time. The students filed out of the control room quickly, still talking. Caleb remained, watching Obi-Wan disappear through another doorway. His eyes turned back to the beacon. He could sense Master Balaba watching him. He looked back to see her alone, waiting in the doorway. The frown was gone. Her eyes were warm and caring. She gestured for him to follow her. He did. My young strategist has been thinking again, she said as they stepped into the elevator. Any other questions? Await orders. Caleb gazed at the floor, and then up at her. What if orders never come? I won't know what to do. Maybe you will. Maybe I won't. She watched him thoughtful. All right, maybe you won't. But anything is possible, she said, putting her arm on his shoulder as the door opened. Perhaps the answer will come to you in another form. Caleb didn't know what that meant, but then it was Master Balaba's way to speak in riddles. And as always, he forgot about them as soon as he stepped out onto the floor where the young Jedi trained. On any given day, room after room would see the mightiest warriors in the galaxy teaching the next generation in lightsaber combat, acrobatics, hand-to-hand -hand fighting, even starship piloting using simulators. Every discipline imaginable where a kinship with the mystical force, the energy field all Jedi drew upon for strength, could come in handy. And those he saw were just a tiny fraction of the Jedi Order, which had outposts and operatives throughout the known galaxy. True, the Galactic Republic was at war now with the Separatists, but the Jedi had thwarted threats for a thousand generations. How could anyone or anything challenge them? Caleb arrived in front of a room where his classmates were already at work, sparring with wooden staffs. One of his regular dueling partners, a red-skinned humanoid boy, met him in the doorway, training weapon in hand. He had also attended the lecture. Welcome, young Master Sirius, he said, smirking. What was all that back there with Master Kenobi? Forget it, Caleb said, pushing past him into the room and reaching for his own training weapon. It's nothing. But wait! The other boy's free hand shot up into the air, mimicking Caleb's questioning. Ooh, ooh, call on me! <laughs> yeah, you're gonna want to focus, buddy, 
because I'm going to whip your tail. Caleb smiled and went to work. This is Obi-Wan Kenobi. Republic forces have been turned against the Jedi. Avoid Coruscant. Avoid detection. Stay strong. May the force be with you.